Thanks for checking out this movie review video, and this is for the 2020 film Tremors Shrieker Island. Yes, yet another Tremors, and Burt Gummer is back, baby. You know I'm excited about it. You can probably tell from my uh, Graboid shirt, which I got from Freight Rags, which is awesome. Uh, I've become a big fan of the Tremors series ever since I binged it a bunch of months ago. Well, not a bunch, just a few months ago, and just kind of fell in love with the whole series. I mean, even as the films get less fun and less good it uh is still it's still fun because Burt Gummer's through all of them and Burt Gummer is in this one front and center as usual and I will say I actually do think that this film is better than uh number six which is a cold day in hell number five which is bloodlines and certainly number four which is the legend begins which is the worst film of all of them so Basically, what I'm saying is this is the best Tremors film since Tremors 3 Back to Perfection, which is quite good. So this is definitely worth it. If you like the first, second, and or third Tremors film, I think this is one you should definitely watch. It is on Netflix at the moment. Um, I think it's some other places, but Netflix is where I ended up watching it. It is. It's a joy. Now, since this just came out, this will be a no spoilers review. But you don't really need spoilers for a Tremors review. And that said, you also need to know that I have a playlist on my channel of the reviews of all the Tremors films, as well as the Tremors TV series that was done for sci-fi some time ago. I can't remember exactly when it was, but it's in the video. But So check it out. Uh, this one is directed by Don Michael Paul, who did films Half Past Dead, Who's Your Caddy, uh, Kindergarten Cop 2, Death Race 4, Beyond Anarchy, The Scorpion King, Scorpion King Book of Souls, and Tremors 5, Bloodlines, and Tremors 6, A Cold Day in Hell. So this is his best directorial Tremors film to date, in my opinion. It was also written by Paul, but also Brian Brightley, who wrote scripts for Liars All, Home Run, which has Sean William Scott in it, interestingly enough, Man Camp... And Inside Man Most Wanted. I have not seen any of those films. Now, obviously, Michael Gross is back as Burt Gummer, and he is exceptionally Burt Gummer in this film. He is such a steady actor. He always embodies that character the same way. And I think over all the scripts for the series, they've done a good job of writing him, you know, all the time as Burt Gummer and giving him lines that feel like Burt Gummer lines. And this one is... By far no exception. Now, Jamie Kennedy is not in this. Jamie Kennedy was playing his son Travis recently in, in uh, numbers uh, five and six. But he's gone. I think a lot of people didn't like him. I was totally fine with his acting. I thought he was good in the movies that he was in. But he's not in this anymore. And in his place is John Heater, who is in such films as, obviously, best known for Napoleon Dynamite, but also in Blades of Glory, the bench warmers and he's actually been doing a lot of voice acting for animated shows so yeah so he's still been working and then probably the best oh by the way john heater does a good job in this i like john heater in this his acting is good and for the most part the acting in this film is solid to good so uh it's nice the one of the best additions to this film by the way is the villain played by richard brake now, Richard Brake has been known for things such as Hannibal Rising, Halloween 2, the Rob Zombie Halloween 2, Game of Thrones, he was the Night King, uh, 31, also by Rob Zombie, Mandy, and 3 from Hell. Actually, he was like the only portion of the movie 3 from Hell that I enjoyed. I wasn't a big fan of that, but he did a really good job. He's an awesome actor. He really chews the scenery when he's in there, and he's an awesome addition to this film. And to see... Richard Brake and Michael Gross in the same scenes, it's pretty nice, I gotta say. Uh, this film was initially called Island Fury, but obviously that changed to Shrieker Island. Uh, I think Shrieker Island is a better is a better title, by the way. Uh, there is a scene in this. This doesn't really, this doesn't factor into the film really at all. But there's actually a scene in this where Burt Gummer eats a grub. Now, a uh, little bit of trivia: Michael Gross actually ate that grub. For, for filming this, just so you know. And apparently there was a promotional video that went up on YouTube for this film to get people hyped for it of Burt Gummer announcing his candidacy for President of the United States for 2020. Funny. I mean, that's a good way to do things. 
So what's the synopsis on this? Obviously, there's Graboids. Obviously, there's Shriekers in it because it says Shriekers in the title. Now, it's a situation where there is a uh, someone from, I, I believe it's Silicon Valley, a very rich individual who's purchased a private island. He has bred Graboids and has them on this island to bring other rich people from Silicon Valley out to hunt Graboids. It's big game hunting at its pinnacle, basically. And obviously, as we would assume, it's not a good idea because things get out of control and then Burt Gummer has to be called in. So there you go. That is the synopsis of it. You would probably assume that. It's, it's, not, a big, it's not a big deal to tell you the things I told you. It ruins nothing about the film. It's a high energy start to this film with intense music. And the music, by and large, is, is pretty good and well matched throughout the film. There always needs to be at least one scientist type in these films, because there always is pretty much, and John Heater's character kind of ends up being the main one, although there are other ones as well. So it's a little bit more of a science cadre showing up in this one. The setting for the film looks really nice and tropical, and it's a very new setting for these types of films. And that's one of the things I really like about it. They took Graboids, and they took them from the desert, in the sixth one, they were in a, you know, colder environment, but now they're in a tropical environment, and that's very new, and that adds a really great visual component to the film, because, honestly, just taking Graboids and Shriekers and stuff like that and putting them in a new setting is good. It, it keeps things a little more fresh for the film franchise. So there's an explanation as to why Travis is not involved in this film. It's a very quick explanation, but... You know, it works well enough. It, it, it's not anything that people be like, oh, that's a really good explanation. It's like, okay, that's an explanation. We can move forward. We're fine. Um, like I said before, it, but it bears repeating, Richard Brake is very good in this. He is an awesome villain. He always is. I mean, that's what he plays. He, he does it extremely well. Love him in this. The group of tourists provides some interesting scenes to this. And I think that kind of speaks more to the overall experience of other characters who show up in this film are actually not bad characters. They're not just one-dimensional crap. Well, a few of them are one-dimensional, but for the most part, the characters who have speaking lines are not just one-dimensional stupid characters. They're interesting. Uh, they add to the film, whether it's adding story-wise, adding because you kind of like the character, or adding comedically, or adding as just good fodder for Graboids and Shriekers. Uh, it's, it's nice. Burt Gummer is the same guy we all love, thankfully. I mean, that's the main thing that peeps, keeps people coming back to the Tremors films, and it delivers. The weapons in this that Burt and Jimmy use are really fun. Jimmy, by the way, by the way, is John Heater's character in the film. Uh, the, the weapons they use, especially initially when they go out trying to solve the issues here, very fun, very fun. And I don't think that's been used before. Maybe one other time in the franchise, but I think this is the first time. Uh, there's a scene that's supposed to be done in a kind of disorienting way because of something that happens, uh, but the way it was actually executed kind of makes it more confusing and a little bit off-putting for me personally. Now, people will probably know what I'm talking about once you eventually see it, but or if you've already seen it, but it's um, I see what they were going for there, but I just didn't feel like it worked. It became annoying more than anything. I didn't like it. The CGI of the creatures in this actually look pretty good, uh, and they are updated for a newer film, which I think they look more menacing, which obviously is a good thing. The Graboids look more menacing. The Shriekers look, I think, significantly more menacing than they have in the past, so I really like that touch. Usually in the film, when you're seeing them as CGI, it's the none of them are done in practical effects so whenever you're seeing them they are cgi so when you're seeing them it's usually relatively quick they're not on the screen a lot but there are a few ones where it's uh more prolonged shots of them but they still look pretty good honestly they really do so i like the shriekers and graboids on this there's good action sprinkled in this film with comedy as well. Well, there's a lot of action to it, but there's really nice comedy kind of sprinkled throughout the film. It's not heavy in any part, but it comes in here and there. And it, for the most part, the comedic aspects land. They're actually pretty solid. 
I like uh, I like the characters for the most part, like I already said, and I think the writing is pretty solid for this. Um, it's re I mean, you'd look at this film as a whole, step back, and if you're looking at it compared to a bunch of other films, you're like, this is a decent film. But if you're looking at it compared to other films in the Tremors franchise, and for it being the seventh installment in the Tremors franchise, it's really well written for that. I mean, it overperforms, in my opinion, for being the seventh installment in the Tremors franchise. It's a welcome film to this to add to this franchise. I love it when it rains graboid guts. Uh, I've said it before in my other reviews, and I'll say it again. I love it, love it, love it when it rains graboid guts and chunks. It's one of my favorite things that happens in the films. Um, some people may not like the ending to this film. But I thought it was personally a good ending, especially when you pair it with what they end up doing during the ending credits. And you'll know what I'm talking about once you see it. Um, yeah. So I think, you know, the, it was petering out. The franchise was petering out, obviously. You know, when it got to five, a lot of people didn't like it. I thought five was okay. When it got to six, six was the worst one since four, even though four is like the, the worst I'm sure you lost a lot of people after 4, but I'm sure there are a lot of people who are like, I won't go any further, 4 is terrible. But I think 5 is better than 4, and 6 is probably still better than 4, but not as good as 5. Now 7 is better than all 3 of those, so that is encouraging and awesome, and it makes me want an 8th Tremors film. Yes, I just said that. I know some people are probably shaking their heads, but for me personally, I'll take more. Let's go. I'm ready for it. More Graboids? I, I want it. So certainly the best looking and directed since Tremors 3, actually, not only story-wise, but looking and directed. So I think Paul, uh, this guy, uh, Don Michael Paul, ha has been doing better jobs. He's getting better. Like, you see this guy evolving as a director. So good, good on him. The heart of this film speaks to what happens when rich people think they can do whatever they want and not ever worry about consequences. And then it's up to others to kind of step in and clean up their messes, which obviously that happens in real life. So we're taking a real life issue, a real life concern, and inserting it into a story with Graboids and Shriekers. So totally good. I'm down. Uh, at times it has a bit of a Jurassic Park flavor to it. And then it goes to having a bit of a Predator flavor to it, which I'm all for. And you'll, if, if you go into the film thinking about those things, Jurassic Park and Predator, you'll definitely see it in this film. They definitely drew inspiration from those things. And it was a good thing. They didn't use it to corny effect. They used it well. So, yes. So anyway, that's basically all I have to say about Tremor Shrieker Island. Obviously, I'm a fan of it. I liked it. It's not the best film ever, but... I'm going to give it a solid rating. So out of five stars with half stars in play, I legitimately think this is a 3.5. It is a three and a half star film. And if you are, if you've liked any Tremors film, you should watch this one, in my opinion. And if you love Burt Gummer, soak it in. You are going to be in your glory when you watch it. So I definitely recommend this for people who like Tremors. Even some people who are just curious about Tremors. You don't need all the backstory, honestly. If you haven't seen any other Tremors film, you can watch this. It's still fun. It's still a really fun time. And one of the big, like, fight scenes, action scenes towards the end, real fun. So, anyway, uh, that's all I have to say about this. Let's talk in the comments. Spoilers, go ahead. Let's talk spoilers about this film, and we'll get nerdy. Do me a quick favor, though. Hit that subscribe button, uh, because that is the way I keep motivated going through this. I don't get paid or anything to do this. Uh, I make no money. I'm just spending my time doing it, because... I'm putting it out there for people. I want to get nerdy. I want to talk about horror, and I hope that people find these videos and find value in them. So whenever you subscribe, it really drives me further, and it, you know, it's a form of showing gratitude for what I'm doing, so I would appreciate that. But also hit that uh, notification bell, and then that way you know when I'm putting up new review videos or unboxings or doing live streams. Uh, but thanks regardless for taking your time to watch this, and until next time, keep it brutal.